about this samples back um this is called metcalf barley metcalf variety uh two row barley it is a malting variety so in a year where you get good germination and the proper kernels hi sweetie uh the proper kernel size proper protein level you can get a premium this will go to make beer so we sent our sample out already and it came back 99 percent germ so all of this stuff will make it won't go for livestock feed if we can keep it in condition in the bin of course it will go to make beer so the next uh this winter and next summer if you're enjoying a beer don't forget to thank a farmer it's like 33 degrees super smoky from that wildfire dusty dirty the it's been it hasn't rained in like three weeks any amount of rain so the the dirt on the road is just like powder crushed into powder so you always we're full of dirt all of us everybody that's tall and grain is absolutely full your eyes your ears your nose your mouth your hair so we are uh we're doing our part good morning i am uh i'm in it i'm deep in it so 9610 uh we brought it home yesterday from north of town finished the barley harvest uh we had 20 acres left to cut here we wanted to drop the straw for the baler man so we got this all fueled up greased up serviced up had to put the header back on because we took it off and we were north of town to get it across the bridge uh took it out to the field header won't engage well i mean it, it had worked all day all we did was unhook the header bring it home so what the hell could the problem be well get on the google box and this that and the next thing so i tested all the switches tested the fuses tested 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 and uh basically ended up with everything worked why wouldn't it turn on well i found that when i rubbed my finger across a certain part of this board it would click on which made me think that something wasn't getting power getting connection so then i thought well could it be this stupid seat has a sensor so i found the sensor i unplugged it stuck a jumper wire in there and uh we'll give it a shot here so there's quite a process right and this is a 98 so this isn't even like a new one but there's all this this you got to be in the seat you got to be blah 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 for it to work right so we'll see if it even starts okay that's a win now i had switched these back and forth this is separator this is your header they, everything worked i had power everywhere it just when i flipped the switch on it didn't work so you got to turn the separator on to get the header to go so we'll fire that up that works and now, header. Oh, well, would you look at that. All right, and now uh, what's, uh, what's procedure here on oats? So it's merely a formality at this point because uh, we've taken off five, six loads already. They've all been the same. So with cereal grains, it's all about moisture and bushel weight. Um, at least for, for me, for storing it anyways. So what we got to do, we got to go to 200 grams. Barley, I think, was 250. Wheat was 225 or something like that. So they got some slightly different numbers. You get that... Uh, you get that off this right here. Boom. See? 200. It says 200. Tough 13 6 to 17. After that, it's damp, no good. Dry is 13 5 and under. Uh, so, we got to make sure our machine's calibrated, which it is. You don't got to calibrate these every time, once a day, every once in a while. So, in goes our 200. Oops. You don't actually want to spill any, but like I say, this is just a formality. It's all going to be the same. Drop it down. See, it drops down in there. And then you. Turn this dial, see that orange thing's going up? You want it to be all the way to the left. Look at the chart, what does it say? One, okay, so we come over here and we find one. We're gonna say it's about 26 degrees, 25.8. One over 25.8, boom, boom. The oats are 10.2, dry is 13.5 at 25 degrees. So we like to, write it all down like this um that way when we go to get a baseline for our 
our bin cables, like we have those temperature cables inside of the bins. Uh, we'll let it sit for a day or two, and then we'll be able to come back and we'll plug it into it. And if it corresponds to what the temperature that we put it in there at, we know we're off to a good start. Now the grain's gonna start to change as, uh, you know, if we have another super bunch of hot days, the grain at the top and the grain at the bottom near the aeration fans will actually, the temperature will go up a little bit. If it just starts to get really, really cold, um, it'll just go down a little bit. And we wanna watch for like any consistently going up because that means you got trouble and you wanna get on that right away. And then as far as bushel weight, it's the same thing as with the barley and the wheat. You throw on your half liter. Of course, the guys at the elevator say that there's, you know, you need the special cone and stuff. And yeah, maybe you do. I don't know. This always gives us pretty good reference. So we got that zeroed out now. I just use this because it's easier to pour. Still some in here. Yeah, we'll use this too. Um, okay, so you fill that thing right up. In goes your... And you just want to be reasonable when you're dumping it in. Like, you don't want to pound it in there. And you do want it to overflow. That's why you do it over a cup. Take yourself a striker, ruler or anything like that. Once across. Nice and level. Just once. Now you don't do nothing else. 268. And you don't lie to yourself. You don't be like, oh, it's 270. No, it's 268. Get realistic with things. Come over now, you find your chart. That's barley. Find your oats chart. We're gonna go with the Avery bushels. We've got to find 268. So our oats weigh 46.1 pounds per bushel. Standard bushel weight for an oat, 34 pounds. So as I've said before on my channel, and I don't know why it is, we, although we can't get bushels, we rarely get these high yields that people talk about. We don't get um, 80 bushel canola. We don't get 140 bushel wheat. We don't get 150 bushel barley. Uh, the, with the exception of oats, we have gotten 150 bushel oats before. But uh, we generally don't get these massive yields that people talk about, that people hear about. We, uh, you know, we're, we're somewhere down in the bottom of, of the spectrum of what you would, can expect. And uh, we're fine with that. One, we, one thing we can do, almost year in, year out, even despite growing conditions, is get bushel weight. And uh, when you start to figure in bushel weight, that increases your yield as well. If the standard bushel weight of an oat is 34 pounds, and you put on 45 pound oats, 46 pound oats, you actually gain some right there by weight. So, anyways. Life is good. Two combines rolling. One uh, one guy hauling grain. One grandma and granddaughter out on the buggy delivering lunches. One papa in the combine. One mom in the combine and one buddy in the combine. So can't ask for a better day thrashing oats. Actually, aside from that wildfire that is potentially pushing people's cattle off of leases. We could, we could do without that. So anyways, I'm gonna get off of here. It's loud, it's windy, it's, it's, it's gross, it's dusty. And uh, we'll see where we end up here for the rest of the day. This crop of oats is totally nuts. I don't know where we're gonna put it all. Oops, shaky. Good problem to have, I guess. Maybe dump it on the ground, I don't know. Well, good evening. Well, as you can see, we've been plugging away at the house. So actually my mom's been helping Corey paint inside. So that's, uh, that's quite nice. And my dad helped me put the railing on, put the slide on for the kids. Uh, things are looking pretty good. Of course, we got some landscaping to do around the bottom. We're not gonna actually just leave the piles of wood underneath the slide. That's just to hold it up so we could get it into place. But uh, yeah, all in all looking pretty good. So we are, we are caught up. All the canola has been swathed. Our peas and canola have been swathed. Um, we're done cereals. Everything's in the bins. Uh, there's one bin that doesn't have an aeration fan in it that's got some like 34 degree barley in it right at the top. So that's the only kind of thing that I'm a little bit worried about. It's a 2,700 bushel bin, so no big deal. If I plug my monitor in and it goes up one or two or three degrees, of course that's not 
you don't want it to go up at all. It shouldn't. It should. It should be going down if at all. If if, <clears throat> if anything, it should be going down. Of course, it doesn't go down very fast because it's sealed in the bin. But I can just go up there really quick, unload the whole bin into my Super B, and just cycle it once. That'll cool it down a little bit. Uh, as I've said before earlier in the fall, harvesting grain at thirty plus degrees is not a northern Albertan problem we don't usually we don't usually encounter that normally we're harvesting grain at like five degrees eight degrees minus two degrees so we don't know what's going to happen our barley was between 10 and 12 moisture 13 5 is dry our wheat was between 10 11 moisture 14 5 is dry our peas came off at 12 and a half 13 16 is dry our oats came off at like they wouldn't even test they were so dry our tester goes at zero it's like 10 and it was below zero like it wouldn't it wouldn't actually go so they're like nine or ten and i think they're dry at around 13 as well so the only problem would be sweating right if it sweats a little bit and it's that hot maybe maybe potentially you have some problems i don't know i don't know we're gonna it's we're gonna learn i don't know we're gonna learn um if there's anybody that watches these videos it's in like a really hot climate australia south america even the southern states what do you guys do like do you have to blow on it or is it is it fine uh, so we did aerate down a bunch of our barley. It was we was coming off the field at 30, between 30 and 34 degrees, and we blew on it. We got it down to 22 degrees. Blew on it overnight when it cools off, and uh, so so that's mostly all good. But uh, so now we're waiting on canola. I just went out and uh, they got these like handheld combines and all sorts of stuff, so you can get a sample. Uh, generally, I dread trying to do anything without a combine because you can't. You can't get a sample right you walk to the best part of the field you get a sample and you're like oh it's dry it's good to go and then you go and you go around the field and then you get the green spot and then you get into problems that's my experience with that but i walked out here with a bucket just a five gallon bucket and i just stuck it under the swath in about eight places close to the bush and i just ruffled it and i actually got like 700 grams so that really shocked me like i was expecting like a really horrible canola crop and we still could get one don't get me wrong this is just a very limited test but it took me no time at all to get enough to get a sample and it was 14.3 so canola on our farm is dry at under eight seven six is better because we don't i don't trust canola but i think the standard is about eight and a half or something is they call dry maybe it might be 10 i don't know they, they, that kind of changes because it is a hard it's a hard thing to keep if there's some green ones in it then it, it's worse too blah 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 but i crushed it out i got maybe one well i got one for sure maybe two green ones so it looks like it's going to be a top grade canola and uh potentially could the yield could be there it could be a 30 bushel crop i guess so but at 14.2 we got basically two weeks of pretty good weather coming at us we're not gonna get too serious about about getting out there and getting it we'll give it another three or four days and uh let it come right down still got to take the headers off the combines because we aren't going to straight cut anything anymore because we don't have anything to straight cut we were debating straight cutting our canola that's north here but it looked too awful and weird so i just went and swapped it so we got to uh clean up donnie the swather get him put away take these headers off get them put away put the pickup back on I had my disc hooked up because we had that wildfire out west, which I think is still burning. And it would be nice if it would rain and just put that out. And then, uh, yeah, I've been making bags, working on the house. So that's that. As always, thanks for watching. And we will see you all on the next one.